Hello and a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good evening to you. The good people of the tube. Hope you're all today. Hope you're feeling grand and all is well in your world. Happy Monday, everybody. Hi there. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's just twisting me melon, man. Anyway, enough on that. Anyway, um, word association with Dave Simpson. Anyway, today's video as yet at this point in time is untitled it will have a title when it comes out but i don't know what to call it at this point in time so for this point in time i'm going to call it uh get out of jail free links uh basically what i want to do in this video is teach you some kind of really cool stock phrases that you can uh then take away and use in your own guitar solos uh whether you're ever writing a guitar solo or you're um uh, improvising and what these and what these kind of stock phrases are really really good for? They're they're quite fast, but what these stock phrases are really cool for are kind of like uh, intros to solos, outros to solos, and also if you're improvising solos, they give you a bit of breathing space. Much in the same way as if you're kind of like playing a, a blue a, a twelve bar blues, you get uh, you get like kind of stock phrases like this. You know, you get stock phrases like that. These are more kind of rock orientated. So I'm going to teach you things like this today. Um, or, you know, or, you know, stuff like that. So basically, licks like that I'm going to teach you today. They're really kind of cool stock rock phrases. Stock rock phrases but they're really really cool to work from and they also sound really cool you know during any kind of solo um, and they're really really good for if you're improvising a solo to kind of like help you buy time or create a sense of urgency you know depending on how you kind of like want to make the solo feel if if you're if, if you want the solo to be really frantic from the get-go and everything's just really you know oh, in your face then you know start start a solo with this <laughs> You know, it, it, it creates that sense of urgency. And it's also really good for if you're improvising a solo, it can if, if something distracts you or something throws you off, um, they're quite a good thing to go to to get you, and, until you get yourself back on track. So for instance, like if you're doing like a, a guitar solo in a pub and you know every, everybody's loving it or hating it, depending on how you know the, the crowd are. You know, and then, and then a squirrel walks in with a shotgun, you know, and it throws you straight off where you are. You're like, oh, you're like, there's a squirrel coming, and you just feel like, yeah, you can go to that to, kind of, to get yourself back on track while he gets taken out by the badger security guards. Um, anyway, but yeah, you know, hopefully you know what I mean. So, like, these little kind of like, they're called trills. And basically what these trills can do, like I say, is create a sense of urgency or just kind of give you a bit of breathing space, much in the same way like, you know, block, stock blues licks like that can buy you time, so to say, to, to get back into what you're doing. Because um, distractions can occur all over the place, you know, certain things can happen, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's very common in a live situation for things to kind of distract you, especially if you're playing like a pub or something like that. So these kind of stock phrases will be really, really cool for that. So... Without further ado, the first one I'm going to show you is this one, which is really awesome. And it, 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 these things, these little trills, took me years to figure out. No one I knew knew how to do them. And the first time I saw them was Slash on a Usual Illusions VHS video. Uh, uh, like they were on tour in Japan in '92, and that was the first time I'd seen anybody do these kind of really fast trills. And I was like, "What is that?" Then I subsequently saw John Fashanti doing it and James Dean Bradfield from Matt Street Preachers doing it and Jimi Hendrix doing it and Eric Clapton and Mike McCready of Pearl Jam and all these guitarists. So it took me a long time to figure it out. So um, hopefully this video, if you are trying to figure out these kind of things, will, will help you along the way you know, a lot quicker than it took me to figure it out because it took me about, about a couple of years, two, maybe two, maybe about one and a half to two years, give or take, just to kind of understand how it worked. So... Without further ado, let's get to the first one and then I'll show you all sorts of little different stock phrases and you can take them away and mess around with them and just, you know, go wherever you want with them, right? So, move the camera in and uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so, uh, first one I'm going to show you today, first trill of the day, is this one. 
Okay, so it's very simple. It sounds a lot more complex, and it sounds like there's more going on than it actually is. It's only three notes. So, um, and technically, I would say you want to play it with your your first, your middle, and your ring finger. Uh, I would kind of keep your little finger out of the equation for this point in time. But if you find it easier to go like that, then then do it like that. But um, I, I I can't do that. I, I find my little finger kind of gets a bit muddled up there. So uh, I use these three fingers. But again, do what's comfortable for you. Don't necessarily say what the way I'm doing it is gospel. It's just the way I do it. It doesn't it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect for you, so to say. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're playing the 12th fret B, and that's the only time we're actually going to hit the string. The rest of the notes are all going to be basically by us hammering our fingers down. So we're only going to play this note with a plectrum, so like that. And then this is basically, that's out of the equation. So what we do is we play the 12th fret B string, then we hammer on to the 15th fret B string, and then we pull off 15th fret B string back to the 12th fret B string. And then we go up to the 12th, uh, the 14th fret, sorry, on the G string. So if I do it with two fingers, it's like this. So put you uh, play this, play this note, hammer on, pull off, and then hammer on again onto that note. And one more time, really, really slow. You can actually play the uh, 14th fret on the G string. You can go if you want, um, but it's up to you. It, it really doesn't matter if you play it or you don't play it because uh, the, the force of your finger going down will be enough to make the note sound. And basically, once you've got that, It's just a case of speeding it up gradually. Don't rush it. Just, just take it, take it nice and easy, and just go. Oh, hang on, I'm playing the note. Until you, until you kind of get going. And like I say, you can play that A note if you want the, the G string on the 14th fret. You can play it if you want. Or you don't have to. There's not really a great deal of difference other than the, the A note on the 14th fret has a little bit more impact. But I say if you're if you're using distortion, it, it's very you know like you know it's it's kind of negligible really. It doesn't it doesn't really matter, so to say. Okay, so that's the first one. It's it, you know, and it, it's I can guarantee you've heard that like a, a million times in in one song or another. I like I say, Slash uses it a lot. Every so many rock guitarists use that lick a lot. They really do. So it's a really cool one to kind of start solos with. Uh, Why Go by Pearl Jam. Uh, the guitar solo in that starts with that exact trill. But what actually Mike does, he bends up uh, the G the A note first. But it's a very very slight thing. It, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so. That's the first trill, and like I say, it's just, and you can play it if you want, uh, that, that A note if you want, you don't have to. And it's really important to be able to obviously like, play, play it in time to the song, so if you're kind of like going like, that, 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 you know, and you can, you can also push it. To make the song feel like it's getting like you know bit speeded up, and you can also drag it to make it feel like the song's pulling. So speeding it up, like you know, if you're kind of if the song's kind of tempoed, you can kind of speed that up to make it feel a bit more urgent. So, or you can slow it down to get really. If the song's going really fast and you start out and you gradually slow it down, it starts to drag it. So, so it's it's a really versatile little lick to use. It's really really cool. So, and it's dead simple. I say it's only three notes. It's just hammer ons and pull offs basically. And I say you can if you want play that note. You don't have to. 
I would say if you are going to play that note, it's best to up pick the B string and then down pick on the G string. Hopefully you can kind of see my uh, my right hand or what's going on there. Okay, so that's trill one. Okay, trill two is going to be kind of a, basically an expansion on this. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to change this 14th fret to the 15th fret. And you hear people like Gary Moore using this one. And, um, well, it's, again, a million zillion guitarists use this one. But it gives it a different sound. So instead of this one, you get this. You know, because you're using this flat five, using the uh, the blue note. And it sounds really strange, but really, really cool. And it's exactly the same principle. So we're hammering, uh, we're playing the 12th fret B string, hammering onto the 15th fret uh, B string, pull off, and then we're, but instead of resolving to uh, finishing on the 14th fret B, uh, G string, we're now finishing on the 15th fret G string. And you can actually go between the two. But that's it. I call that the Gary Moore one because he's the one I hear using it quite a lot. And I actually find it easier just to do use it uh, like that. But it's basically the exact same thing. Like I say, the only thing we're changing is the A note to the B flat note here, basically. So it's basically, from, instead of a 14th fret G string, we're playing the 15th fret uh, G string. Okay, so, so far, we have this one. And this one. Okay, so the next one is a little bit more involved, and it kind of um, incorporates a string bend. It's this one. The next one we're going to learn is it. And this is a little bit more involved, and, like, this is this is really cool. You can hear it. Uh, you can hear this, like, in... Um, Dave Gilmore's extended solo for Comfortably Numb. Uh, and, and a million other kind of um, guitarists use this as well. So what we're doing to start this lick, we're not starting on the B string anymore. We're starting up with a bend. So 14th fret on the G. Like that. And then we go down to the 12th fret on the high E. So like that. So bending up the uh, 14th fret on the G string. And then we're reaching down, basically. Actually, it's, it's best to actually bar the B and the high E strings with your first finger. So, like, if you're going to kind of like play like a, a chord, if you will, so to say. So, so that's what we're going for. So the first note is... So we're going from there to the high E string 12th fret. And then it's a... Uh, a hammer on and a pull off on the B string between the 12th and the 15th. So bend up, 14th fret G, 12th fret high E, um, 15th fret B, pull off to the 12th fret uh, B, and that's it. So bend it up, I can't, I can't do it fast enough with uh, one with two fingers. They just can't hack it, man. But yeah, so that's the next one. So it, and this is a really cool one. And what I would recommend here is pick down the uh, pick down on the uh, G string bend, then pick up on the high E, and then down again on the bit on the B string, and then and then down again. Uh, say if you, you can, hopefully you can see my right hand. You're about to see. And I'm getting a bit silly there. That's that's kind of alternating things. But that's that's the next. One. So that's the next one. So we've got. Okay. So so far we have this one. This one. And this one. Which again is is a really kind of like they're very popular licks. You can actually also too variate that first one by doing the bend, which is exactly the same principle. What we're doing we're just starting with the bend. So we're not starting here uh, on the B string on the twelfth fret. We're starting on the A note, the fourteenth uh, fret on the G. So we're bending up. Uh, so bending up the uh, the G string 
uh, 14th fret. Going to a 12th fret B. Yeah. And then go to a B string 12th fret. Uh, 15th fret B string. Pull off. It's actually a lot harder to explain than it looks. Uh, I thought this was going to be actually quite easy to explain. It's actually really difficult. So anything I'm muddling up my words, everybody, I do apologize for massively right now. But hopefully you can see what's going on with all these licks. So if I just do all of them with two fingers, you hopefully be able to see if I do them really slow. So the first one. Second one. Third one. And then we got a fourth one now, which is it. And you can always resolve every single one of these with an amazing bend on the fifth on the fifteenth fret. If you bend up the fifteenth fret on the B string, a toad, it resolves all these licks. It sounds really cool. So if you're or or. You know, you can do all sorts of little things. Okay, so that's uh, that's those first four. And that's mainly using the G and the B strings. Uh, I want to move down now to the B and the E, the high E now. And uh, show you this one. And again, same principle as before with this one. It's no different. It's just that the, the shape is different now. So we're starting on the 12th fret on the high E. And we hammer on to the 15th fret high E. Pull off 15th fret high E back to the 12th fret high E. And then we finish up on the 15th fret on the B. And again, it's just a case of getting the speed up. So, you know, then you get that one, which again... You've probably heard a million times. It's they're so awesome. These these trills are amazing. I love them to bits. I love the sound of them. I love what they add to a piece of music. Like I said they add they, they can add so much to it. Like so much franticness, so much anger and aggression. But at the same time, they can be really kind of somber depending on where they are and how they use. It's really really cool. Okay, so this one is really really cool. And again, you can do the same thing again. You can just play the note the high E on its own. Or you can play this 15th fret on the B as well. Like that, if you want. Um, I tend to flip between the two. It, it, you know, it just, it just depends on the kind of like, you know, whatever happens at that moment, so to say. But uh, I don't kind of like rely on one or the other. I just kind of use both however to however I feel. Okay, so, so far we have... And again, this resolves a really cool bed. <laughs> so that's another one we can use. Okay, so these, and as I say, these are all using minor pentatonic. It's basically using the major part of the minor pentatonic, the G major scale, if you will, because we're in E minor. Okay, so, um, so yeah, another one we can use. This one's very easy, uh, and this is really, really cool. This one's a lot easier than the other ones. This, this one isn't as fiddly. So you want to be borrowing the 12th fret B and high E strings with your first finger. And you want to be um, using your, well, you can use any finger you want, really. Little finger, ring finger, uh, middle finger for this. It, it, whatever's comfortable for you, like I always say. Do what's comfortable for you, not necessarily what's comfortable for anybody else. If this doesn't work... Uh, if using your ring finger doesn't work for you and that using that finger does, do that. But this is the next one. And again, you've probably heard this a million times. So basically what I'm doing here is starting on the 15th fret high E. Remember, remember I've got these two strings barred. The B and the high E are barred all the time on the 12th fret. So starting off on the 15th fret high E. Pull off. And then basically, yeah, your your 15th fret high E, pull off to the 12th fret high, and then you play the uh, B string 12th fret. So really slow, it's there. And 
and let's say really fast. Uh, if you move it to A minor, it's the end of the Stairway to Heaven solo. You know, it, it, it's it's that it's that it's that uh, trill, so to say. So that's the other one. Okay, so we've got another one there now on high E. So we've got this one on the high E, uh, high E and B string, sorry, and this one. Okay, so um, so yeah, so so far we have. Okay, so and, and that's all using just these five notes. Okay, we're not using anything other than these five notes on the bottom half of the minor pentatonic in E minor. So basically, just the uh, twelfth fret. Da, 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 da. Okay, uh, so now uh, the next one I'm going to show you is um, well, and basically an elaboration on this one. And basically, what you're using is you're starting to delve into the major. Um, scale so g major scale minor pan uh, major pentatonic basically on the on this side so what what we're going to do here is this and again this is a bit of a stretch but it sounds really really cool and it's it, it's very melodic it's 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 one of those very kind of like rare times where a kind of fast playing sounds really more you know very kind of melodic sounding so basically the same principle again we're starting on a 15th fret high e play it Pull off, and then you resolve to the uh, B string 12th fret, and then you're doing the exact same thing again, but you're reaching up to the um, the 17th fret now on your high E. I don't think I can do that with two fingers. Okay. So instead of just, we can now elaborate on that and go. Okay. So, and I'll say, these, this is why this is all called kind of get out of jail free, because all these things have real cool um, applications in, inside kind of like blues, rock, reggae, funk, uh, you name it you know, metal, uh, anything. The, these kind of like little trills have so much kind of um, scope, so to say, to be to be used. They're really, really cool. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so far we've got this one, that one, this one, this one, oh, this one, uh, this one, and now this one. And you can kind of mess around with that to your heart's content. You can kind of go... Or... And if you're feeling super, super brave, you can always go up to your... Where are we? 17, 18, 19th fret and do the same thing again. So you go from your 15th, 17th, uh, 19th. <laughs> so... And 20th. But it starts to hurt. <laughs> okay. So that, that's if you're feeling a bit, you know, adventurous. You can also do the same thing on the 14th fret on the high E. Like that. Okay. So uh, so you can go and go. You know, something like that, but it starts to break your little your little finger if it's a, a stretch too far, like that is. It's a stretch too far. Okay, so um, so yeah, so that's another thing you can do with that one. Okay, so the next one we're gonna we're gonna crank up now. We're gonna go to uh, G major now. Basically, it's still in E minor. So if you if you've got a song in e, e minor, you can still use these trills. Okay, so the next trill we're gonna learn is this one, and this is exactly the same principle as this one. But it's just smaller, basically, if you will. So this is between the fifteenth and the seventeenth fret. So fifteenth fret on the G on the on the B string, sorry. 
and then hammer onto the 17th fret B string, pull off on the 17th fret B string back to the 15th fret B string, and then we go up to the 16th fret on the G string. So again, again, just kind of getting that speed up on it is kind of really important. But eventually, you can... and again, you can, same thing. You can kind of like pick the notes, or you can just hit the hit them once and just let the, uh, the you know the, the power of your finger hammer on and make the note. And hopefully, you can kind of get ideas of what I'm doing with my right hand. Uh, just you know, in in because uh, we can see, you see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's the, the next one we've got. Okay, so the next one, again, is just an elaboration on this. Which is it. And this is ridiculously melodic. It's a lovely sounding little trill there. So what we're doing, we're starting out on the 15th fret high E. And then we go to the 17th fret B. Pull off to the 15th fret B. And then we finish up on the 16th fret G. And when it's really fast, it's... So just instead of just... It's... And you kind of want to be playing the E, B, and G strings there. You kind of can't rely on you just hammering on with this hand there. You want to be kind of up, up picking the B, uh, up, up picking the high E, and then down picking the B. And then maybe up picking the G or down picking. Or down picking it. Depending on how you feel. I, I, I go up, down, down. Or you can go up, down, up. But, uh, you know, again, find what works for you and stick to it like glue. Because that's what will you know, eventually make you you, you play, play that the best it will be, so to say. Okay, so that's the next one we've got. So we've got, and now we've got, which is gorgeous. I love that one. Okay, so the next one, I, I call this the slash trill because I haven't actually heard anybody else do this one but slash. I think this is with, this is kind of maybe one of his own little inventions. I haven't actually heard anybody else do this one. And this is quite weird. This is quite a hard one to do and get to sound right because it's, it's a bit muddy. It's this. <laughs> It's exactly the same, but it's just faster. And what you're doing, it's really weird because what you're doing is up picking the high E and the B string. So, so you're you're playing basically this double stop on the 15th fret B and high E there. Like that. So you play that double stop first. Then you hammer on to the 15th fret on the B. And then pull off. And then you resolve. Uh, you finish up on the 16th fret on the G. Na, 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 na. Like that. And I can't do it with two fingers. So it's a very, it's a very kind of strange kind of trill but it's really really cool so hopefully you kind of get the idea of that one as well okay so um so yeah so just to recap then so far we have this this one this one this one this one uh this one and the really adventurous one Uh, this one, uh, this one, and okay. So that's basically it for two and three finger trills that I want to teach today. Uh, I think there's there's a million there to be kind of getting on with and using, uh, getting them incorporating into your own kind of playing, so to say. And like I say, they add a re they're, they're really really cool. They add a lot of tension and release, and they also add a lot of kind of like um, 
uh, in t- intensity and, uh, and you know if things like that <laughs> things like that add a lot of melodic value to solos um and also they're really good to kind of like you know if you're improvising a solo and you get lost you can always have them there in the back of your mind as a stock phrase much in the same way as you've got kind of you know those blues licks like that um just there to call on whenever you need it so to say so it's like a still they're like safety blankets basically which is why they call you know i like to call them get out of jail free uh trills and, and licks if you will because they, they really are they really help you out when you're kind of like you know not lost but you can kind of like you know lose um struggle a little bit sometimes i mean and they're nice little things to kind of get you back onto the straight and narrow so to say okay so uh and out of a woods and away from the walls Rawr! anyway uh i've lost my mind Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about today is single no, uh, single string trills. And uh, basically, uh, these are like uh, Kirk Hammett trills. And these ones are all, uh, things like this. You know, they're all on one string, basically. It's, it's really, really quite simple. So uh, I'm going to teach this one first. And again, this is all in E minor. Okay. So what it is, you start on the 15th fret on the high E, pull off to the 14th fret high E string, and then you pull off from the 14th fret high E string to the 12th fret high E string. And you basically, you play the string every time you reset to the 15th fret. So play the string, play the string, and again. And, it's, and again, it's just a case of getting it kind of speeded up. And you have to use... Uh, there's no way of doing... Well, I suppose there is a way of doing it with two fingers. Um, and it's basically just a case of not starting off nice and slow. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then... And then gradually speeding it up. So, basically, this video is like a widdly widdly night... Uh, widdly widdly dream, basically. It's like... <laughs> a lot of that kind of thing going on. Um... But they are really cool. And I'll say they've been used by rock guitarists since the dawn of rock. They really have. So many, you know, guitarists use these kind of like little licks and stuff. It's really, really cool. Okay, so stuff like that. Okay, so and then you can actually move that shape up to go uh, 17, 15, 14. And then you can go uh, 19, 17, four, uh, 15. And then you go 20, 19, 70. So... Okay, so it and I, I call them that they, they remind me of Kirk Hammett because you can hear them loads in Kirk Hammett's playing. Okay, so there's uh, that's uh, that's some single string trills there as well. Um, is there anything else I haven't spoke about? Oh, another one, uh, a Steve Ray Vaughan slash Jimi Hendrix trill. This is a really really cool one. Um, you you start on the fifteenth fret high E string, pull off to a twelfth fret high E string, and then open string. So. And you get that. So that's another really, really cool little trill. I'm basically going through like the little library in my head of all these trills. I think I've covered them all. So just to recap. You can actually move that one up as well so you can go from a 15 and 15 and 12 to the 17th and 14th and then you go from the 19th to the 15th and then you go from the 20th to the 17th and then massive bend <laughs> Okay, so I think that's enough widdly widdly diddly diddly today, uh, as Ned Flanders would probably say. Um, so basically, all these little phrases I've taught you today are really kind of cool stock rock phrases, blues phrases, reggae, funk, um, metal, everything. You, the, all these little these kind of little trills, uh, they're they're used heavily in those kind of um, in those genres. 
Uh, oh, actually, one more before I go, because this one's really, really cool, and I get asked about this one quite a lot. But you can uh, descend your minor pentatonic really quick using the, the, the trill principle that I showed you. So if you go... Hope you can kind of see what's going on there. So it's it's that principle of playing the note, hammering on, pulling off, and then resolving to the next string above. So starting on the high E string, 12th fret. Okay. So really, really fast. It kind of goes... You kind of... Oh, it's a lot easier with distortion. Really slow, it sounds better. It sounds better slow. Fast, it just gets a bit muddy and a bit muddled. Um, okay, so uh, that's the thing you can kind of do, like, you know, just bezing it down, basically, your uh, your, your pentatonic. Um, and I think that's it, everybody. Um, is there any others I can think of? Like I say, th these shapes. So, for instance, like that that shape there on the in the E minor pentatonic on the twelfth fret on the uh, B string, and then resolving to the G string on the fourteenth fret. That first one I showed you. If you want to do that in any other key, it's the exact same shape. So, kind of like think of it as like an offset triangle. So that's the base of a triangle, and there's the point of a triangle. So it's kind of like, um, kind of like, 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 like that, so to say. If, if that makes any sense, you know, you can kind of see the shape with my finger. If I if I just put my fingers there, you can kind of see the shape. Uh, and it's kind of like I say, it's kind of like an offset kind of triangle. So um, that fret. But if you wanted to move that, say, to A minor, just find your A minor pentatonic scale. Go to your get and and basically just kind of copy it. Go okay, so. My E minor pentatonic is here. My A minor is here. And I know it's on the B and the G strings, so it's here. Oh, that's not comfortable with my form behind. You know what I mean? So that's E minor. That's A minor. That's B minor. C sharp minor. G major, uh, G minor. Uh, a minor down here. Um, F sharp minor. Yeah, hopefully you get the idea. I'm, I'm waffling now, everybody. I do apologise for that waffle there. It's not bird's eye either. It's not a very good waffle. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of get the idea there of how to kind of like transpose. And once you know how to transpose this lick, all the other licks should be on your fing under your fingers. So like I so if you're going from E minor to B, mi B minor, so you're doing... You go, well, this song's in B minor, but I want that lick. You just find your B minor pentatonic. Find those notes that are on your G and your B strings, and there you are. And then you've got your other one. And your other one. And your other one. And then you've got your one on your high E and your B string. Then the other one, high E and B. Then um, you can come up here for your uh, for your major, you know, and, and and so on and so forth. But you know, I don't I don't want to explain too much. You know, there's there's a lot to be kind of going on there and, and messing around with, and I say just incorporating these little trills and, and messing around with them and, and getting them into your own playing and using them in your own, in your own way. Uh, because there's so many different ways you can play them. You can play them fast. You can play them slow. You can play them kind of melodically. You can play them. Uh, you know, with a lot of intensity, you can play them a lot of kind of like um, restraint. You can do so much with these licks. They're really, really cool. It's, just, it's the mark of a really good stock phrase when you don't, when you can play the same thing a million different ways. Like, you know, well, not a million different ways, but you know what I mean. So, like, you know, you can really lean on it and really kind of get, you know, get a lot of intensity out of it. Or you could play it really slow and just kind of get a lot of kind of melodic, somber kind of thing. You know what I mean? And and then you can kind of like speed up and slow down. You know, you can do all sorts with them. They're absolutely mega. So, 
uh, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Get Out of Jail Free Trills licks. I don't actually know what I'm going to call this video yet. Um, I will decide in but a moment when I get this video done. Um, name The name might come to me in a dream, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope some of the, like these licks, uh, some of these licks are kind of useful to you. And I say every rock guitarist under the sun has played these at some point. And they're really, really kind of like, you know, need to know kind of licks. Yeah, they, they really are kind of like, you know, I would say they're really, really kind of important as, as far as kind of like, you know, stock phrases, kind of trills and stuff like that need to go. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. I really hope it's been informative. Um, I hope it hasn't been too annoying with the diddly, diddly, diddly noise. Um, but yeah, I do hope you can have to like, you know, take some of these away and just, take, just put a backing track on them and play around and experiment with them. And just see where they take you, really. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you again for Q&A Wednesday. And, uh, yeah, have a great one. Goodbye now. Have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening.